All right, in this video, we're talking about verifying trig identities. The problem on this is that there appears to be no fractions to add. There's no products to find. There's no opportunities to use the Pythagorean identities, like sine squared x plus cosine squared is equal to 1. So I'm left with nothing to do but maybe try to convert everything. Now, of course, on this, I'm looking at the left side. I think that, in my opinion, that looks more complicated than the right side does. So I need to find maybe opportunities. I'm going to convert everything here to sine and cosine. Let's try this out and see what happens. Tangent, I know, is sine over cosine. Tangent of x is equal to sine of x over cosine of x. That means that cotangent is going to be cosine over sine. It's a reciprocal, right? Flip the fraction. So the left-hand side, instead of writing tangent of x, I'm going to use sine of x over cosine of x. And the cotangent I'm going to write as cosine x over sine of x. And I need to show somehow that that is equal to secant x cosecant x. Right? Now I have a couple of fractions and the idea is anytime you see fractions you're probably going to end up combining them. I need to find a like common denominator that's going to be cosine sine. Right? Cosine of x, sine of x. It looks like the first term already has the cosine on the bottom, so I need to multiply it by sine of x in order to get it up to the common denominator. So that becomes sine of x times sine of x. The second term already has the sine on the bottom, so it needs the cosine in order to get up to the common denominator. So I have cosine of x times cosine of x. I need to show somehow that that's equal to cosecant x, secant x. Okay, getting close. Sine of x times sine of x is sine squared of x. Cosine times cosine is cosine squared of x. I need to show that this fraction on the left now, all I've done is I've multiplied those sines and cosines out. I need to show that that's equal to the stuff on the right. You might see it now because I know that sine squared plus cosine squared is just why is this convenient? Because 1 over the cosine is the secant. 1 over the sine is the cosecant. So on my last step then, I'm basically done. Just to write out this last line of work. I have now proven that those two things are equal to each other. So let's try this again. Let's do the exact same thing. Let's convert everything into sines and cosines because I don't see anything I need to multiply out. I don't see any fractions. I don't see any squared terms. So I don't have anything left that I can think of except for writing everything in terms of sine and cosine. Cosecant is 1 over the sine. So I'm going to write that first. That's minus the sine of x. And that must be equal to cosine of x cotangent of x. Okay, now I see that I have a fraction. This is really sine of x over 1, right? So I'm going to take the opportunity now to add these fractions together. Common denominator, sine of x. It looks like the first term already has the common denominator. No adjustment necessary for what that 1 is. I'm going to subtract now sine of x times and it looks like in order to get up the common denominator here, I need to get the sine of x, right? It doesn't have it at all. So I need to multiply it by the sine of x. One step closer. I need to show that that's equal to cosine times cotangent. So the top, then, if I multiply that out, it's 1 minus sine squared. All right. Now, I see a sine squared, so now is an opportunity to use these Pythagorean identities, right? I know that sine squared x plus cosine squared x is equal to 1. So if I want to try to rearrange this to get 1 minus sine squared, it looks like I need to subtract sine squared from both sides. Because when I do that, I'm left with cosine squared of x on the right, on the left. I'm left with 1 minus sine squared on the right. 1 minus sine squared must be the same thing as cosine squared. So I can replace this. I can say, okay, back to 
business here, that means the cosine squared of x over sine to the first power of x. Those must be equal to each other. Oh my gosh. It's right where you can see it, huh? I'm going to replace the top with cosine squared. Alright, now comes the issue of how do I combine these? Well, cosine squared is the same thing as cosine times cosine. So maybe I'm going to go through wrong color here, right? cosine x, cosine x on top, sine of x on bottom. So notice all I did is I split that cosine up into two separate cosines, right? Alright, the reason I did this is because I noticed, look at there, i got a cosine x over here. I've got a cosine x. Part of it's taken care of. What do you see that's left? Cosine over sine. And what is cosine over sine? Turns out that that's cotangent. So our proof checks out. We have just verified that I did it. So there's one thing that we want to do whenever we don't see, once again, the idea is if we don't see any fractions, we don't see any squares, we don't see any opportunities to multiply things out and to try to find, I don't know, like maybe when we multiply, we create squares like we did over here, right? When that doesn't happen, my suggestion would be to convert everything into sines and cosines and start whittling it down from there.